Hello, good evening everyone. Happy New Year. It is so nice to be back with you in 2022. I have not been able to be here for a number of weeks. I was so busy with my clinical work, with doing my outreach and completing my Goldman Sachs Entrepreneurial Business Program, which culminated in New York City about two weeks ago. And it was a completely amazing, wonderful experience that inspired me to continue on with our brain health mission of getting science-based information to you in the brain health community. So I have returned, refreshed, uh, renewed, inspired, and knowing I have a whole new community of support with that program. So I'm very, very grateful to have done that. Tonight, we are going to talk about one of the original missions of the I Care For Your Brain program, which is to steer people to science-based information from someone whose expertise they could trust, who did not have an agenda to sell a too good to be true product. And what we're talking about is brain health pseudoscience. This is something that comes up all the time for me in my practice as a neuropsychologist. People come in and bring their list of medications and supplements. And it's just really honestly sad how many folks take these food-based, herb-based supplements that they believe will impact their ability to pay attention better, their ability to negate age-related cognitive decline, their ability to prevent or reverse things like dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. So we, uh, as doctors, get, you know, concerned for our patients when we see these things um, because we know that there is no return on investment. We know that there's very little science to support anything that they offer. Oftentimes the things that they promise are just really outside the scope of what true medicine and science can offer at this point. We all wish that we had cures for brain health challenges. We all wish that we could take away your pain and suffering with a pill, but it's just not there yet. So I wanted to do this session tonight to just remind people in the new year not to be taken advantage of with these brain health products. So in my estimation, it's really not just a loss of your money, it's a loss of your time. If you're doing something that they recommend, that's just not gonna pay off. Or really the worst thing is uh, really taking your hope with no return. So oftentimes I see people who are making financial sacrifices to buy these products when they could put it into you know, better sneakers to walk with or maybe buying more organic food, things that would actually get them some return. And so when we see you know people being taken advantage of, it really was a call to action to me about four to five years ago that I had responsibility to do more, that I needed to come out here uh, once a week uh, as I can to offer people evidence-based recommendations so that way you would be less susceptible to these too good to be true claims. So what we're going to do tonight is go through some things that you should look for, some things that you should be mindful of, um, and how to protect yourself and the people that you love in our brain health community. So one of the things I want you to be mindful of is the too good to be true nature of what they offer. Oftentimes, Sometimes it's something that's a pretty outrageous claim. So anytime you see words like prevent, reverse, take away, this is not something that is capable of being done commonly. Now the only time that, in my estimation and many other brain health doctors' estimations, that supplements can help you is if there is an identified deficiency. So if you have a vitamin D deficiency, if you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, if you have anemia, if you have something like that where your body is not getting it from a good, healthy, whole foods diet, then by all means, there certainly is evidence that we can alleviate cognitive symptoms, that we can make people more clear-headed, help their memory, help their attention. The problem becomes when it is something that is well above and beyond something that is known to be a biological need. And you will find people are passionate about this topic. People, I probably get more stressed out emails from people that believe wholeheartedly because they, they believe in wellness and they believe in these 
supplements that they really do work. And for those people, I would say that's great for you. It's just using the scientific method to go through the literature and really look at what is offered. I'm not impressed even in the least. So one of the big things is the too good to be true claims. Next, we have something called bioavailability. And what this means is that these medicines aren't necessarily even being absorbed at the level of the gut, never mind able to cross the blood brain barrier and to get into the brain. And so recently there's been a whole bunch of lawsuits against Prevagen, which is the number one brain health supplement in the world, uh, made from a protein from jellyfish. And recently there's been some papers that have come out that have suggested slash proved that it cannot get past the blood brain barrier. So the mechanism that they claim that Prevagen works through is through calcium bonding. And the idea behind their theory would be that it would get into the brain and be able to impact brain health that way. Well, recent studies have suggested it can't get into the brain at all. So this is a theme that we see over and over again. If a compound is able to get past stomach acid, get past the decomposition that happens in the gut, can it even get into the tight junction, the kind of mesh-like um, uh, entity that lives over the brain that would allow things to actually get in the brain and work at all? So that's number two is bioavailability. Number three is that these companies don't follow the scientific method. And what I mean by that is a lot of the science is self-generated, self-funded, and we of course then worry about objectivity, right? The idea of, of true science is that people are blind to outcome because we don't want to influence what we're seeing. We're really trying to be objective, to get our personal agenda off of the books so we can really see if manipulating factor X impacts factor Y. And a lot of times the journal articles that support these supplements are in not very well respected journals, meaning that they don't have the classic peer review process. It is not uh, blind, meaning you don't know who the authors were. It is subjected to the criticism of other experts in the field and you get feedback and you have to make it even better and make more adjustments and make it more scientific and more objective. And that's not what we see in a lot of these industry-based brain health supplements. We're really seeing that the companies themselves are doing the research, they are funding the research. So answer me if you think that's a problem. It really is, it goes against the basic tenets of what it means to do scientific research. Uh, so that's number three. Number four is, and I've said this to you before, is if there is gonna be a breakthrough in medicine-based brain health care, you will not get it over the counter, okay? You will get it from a prescription. That is just the way the United States healthcare system is set up. A pharmaceutical company who are about as wealthy as the oil industry will come in, swoop in, and buy any company up that has shown any objective compound to work in brain health. There is a whole world in pharmaceutical companies called surveillance, where there are people that all they do is monitor the writings, the output, the media communication of little tiny companies that claim to improve brain health. So if it's going to happen somewhere in the world, these companies are gonna come in, offer the little company so much money that nine times out of 10, they're gonna sell it then to where you have to get it from a pharma. Now, is that fair? Is that the way things should work? I really don't know, but what I can tell you is the breakthroughs are going to come from the pharmaceutical companies. That's really just the reality of the way clinical care is being delivered, right or wrong. So when you're out there and you're reading articles and you are getting your brain health news, I want you to be a critical consumer. So look at who it's coming from. Look at what is the evidence, okay? One of the biggest uh, trickster moves from these companies is to get testimonials from people, to say things like clinically proven. All clinically proven means is you sent one person a free sample, called them sometime later, and they said, hey, was good. Very basic, there's no systematic research, there's no double blind placebo controlled studies, there's no real evidence. And if they had evidence, like I said before, 
they would be selling the company to someone who could pay them millions, if not billions of dollars. That is why drug companies exist, is to find the next big breakthrough, right? That's why the stocks for pharmaceutical companies often do historically well. It's not even what we have right now because what we have for things like dementia are, aren't that powerful and we really wish they were. But what everyone is waiting for is the next big thing because it will be so embraced by the public. It's so needed in the community of the world that it will be a billion dollar idea. So there's no way it's gonna be something that you could find over the counter. I wish that was the case, but I just don't think it is. So I want you to be mindful of the language that they use, the people, the scientists, the proof that they're putting out in the world. I really think that this is a matter of exploitation. It's a matter of public health, that we arm people with the ability to know how to navigate these messages. The FDA, the governing body in the United States for proving safety and efficacy of all drug-related products does not have oversight over supplements, okay? And this goes all the way to a very interesting history of how this came to be. I think it was 1964 when that was decided, and you guessed it, it happened through a lot of lobbying to um, have supplements kind of hidden over in the corner. Now, they have certain rules about marketing, and this is how uh, state officials and consumer protection agencies can come in and correct people's you know, public uh, speaking, how they advertise their product, is if they claim to impact health in a significant way, they can get slapped on the risk and they will get a warning letter from the FDA. Now, a lot of the way the FDA learns about products is by us, is by the community. And so if you go online and search FDA consumer protection, you will see that there's a variety of categories for all different types of health. And they don't have brain health in there, but they do have, um, I think, um, uh, something in there maybe related to dementia. I was just looking at it last night. Um, and you will see a place where you can submit a fraudulent product if you've seen it out in the world. You can also see previous warning letters that have been sent to brain health products in particular. So if there's something that kicks around in the media, you will have a chance to go vet it through the FDA because this is on their radar. So I suggest you at least do that as a first pass before you consider spending your hard earned money um, taking in these different supplements. The other thing that's very important to say is because there's not oversight on safety and they haven't done the proper clinical trials, we have no idea about unintended side effects and we have no idea about interaction effects, okay? A lot of these supplements will have negative effects. That's one of the things the FDA keeps track of is, you know, deaths related to supplements, that happens. Um, cardiovascular crises that happen, uh, hospitalizations, you know, uh, issues related to blood thinning, issues related to stimulants like caffeine and green tea that are in a lot of these things. Um, so these aren't benign. I want you to really change your thinking and not think, well, it's natural, it's good, it's, over the counter, it must be okay. Um, we really don't know because they're not under the purview of the FDA about the safety, never mind if they actually work, if they're worth your time and your money. So this is really a, a cautionary tale and a, a way to reduce your risk out in the world. You do not need, in my opinion, uh, any brain health supplement that is on the market today. I think through all the other things we talk about all throughout the year, between diet, exercise, cognitive stimulation, good quality sleep, you know, low stress, um, keeping your mood in check, making sure you remain social, um, all the other evidence-based things that we talk about for brain health are way more solid. It's way more trustworthy to put your precious time and effort into those activities than it is the pill. I think there's a lot of desire to want to fix our problems real quick, just with a quick little pill. It would be wonderful if they worked, and I wish I could be more of a proponent of them. But as it stands now, the things that I know that are on the market that specifically target brain health on the label, there is not one that I would put my name behind. 
If you thought this was helpful or interesting, I would be so grateful if you would share it with the broader community. I wish um, all of you who follow us here on Facebook would maybe hop over to YouTube and just give us a follow there, just making sure we have our community all set for future communications. Um, and I have to tell you a little secret. After doing this for four, five years now, every single time I come in to do one of these lectures, I have my laptop in front of me and a PowerPoint to remind me what to say. This is the first time this has ever happened that I lost my PowerPoint for tonight. I have no idea what happened, but it's usually about 20 to 30 slides. And for some reason, I could not find it. So thank goodness that this brain was able to help me remember, I think, almost everything that I wanted to say. Um, and I appreciate you being here to listen. So we will be back together very soon. One of the things I'm going to do next time we talk is to ask you for suggestions on what I can be doing in the new year to support you, to support your community. I've been doing a lot of thinking about it um, ever since my graduation in New York a few weeks ago. So thank you guys. Happy New Year. Appreciate you being here with me, and I hope it's a great year for everybody health-wise, heart-wise, uh, spiritual-wise. Hope everybody really sees fulfillment in their life in the next year. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.